Welcome to our lecture online. Even though we're going to become familiar with all the general methodologies of how to solve partial differential equations, there are five equations that really stand out. The big five of partial differential equations would have a lot of great applications for science in general. And the five are the wave equation, the diffusion equation, the Laplace equation, the Poisson equation, and the Schrodinger equation. Now notice all of them involve what we call the Laplacian. The second partial derivative of the function with respect to x, y, and z, and you can see that in the first four equations as well as in the Schrodinger equation, this is also the Laplacian here. So it involves, that's involved in all five equations. But what are the five equations used for? Well, the wave equation is used to describe a wave, a wave on a string, or an electromagnetic wave, a light wave, whatever it may be, it can be described by the wave equation. Notice on the left side, we could have a three-dimensional Laplacian, x, y, and z, or it could be a two-dimensional, or it could be a one-dimensional. It works in any of those cases. The diffusion equation is a little bit different. Notice on the left side, we still have the Laplacian of the function. Again, it could be in three, two, or one dimension. On the right side, however, instead of having the second derivative of the function with respect to time, we only have the first derivative of the function with respect to time. Instead of 1 over velocity squared, where v is the velocity of the wave, here we have 1 over k, which is related to the diffusion constant. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail when we talk about that uh, in, in greater detail. Anyway, it can also be called the heat flow equation. So the diffusion equation refers to having a chemical in a solvent and the chemical spreads throughout the solvent. So we, we use the diffusion equation for that. Or we can have heat flow. We have a source of heat. It infuses some heat and now we watch that heat distribute itself throughout the room or throughout the area. Again, it could be over volume, it could be over an area or just over a line. For example, the heat flow along a long bar. When we get to the Laplace equation, notice on the right side we now have a zero. So this is really the same thing as the diffusion equation, but with the zero on the right side, which means we now allow time to go out to infinity. Well, not exactly to infinity, but for a very long time, in such a way that we've reached the steady state. Once we reach steady state, we want to see what the heat distribution is over the area, over the volume, or over the, the, uh, the length of the line. And so that can be done using the Laplace equation. The Poisson equation, again on the left side we have the Laplacian of the function, but on the right side we have a distribution of either the charge, the matter, or the heat source, or something like that. So here we have a source causing a field to exist, or causing a heat flow to exist. For example, if we have a charge density, we'll have an electric field. If we have a matter density will have a gravitational field. If we have a heat source, we'll have a heat flow. And if the source continues to input heat into the region, then this equation is appropriate rather than using the diffusion equation. And finally, we have the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation explains the wave function of very small particles, photons or electrons or protons moving at high velocities. We can, we can then use the Schrodinger equation to predict their location and their velocity, their momentum at some point in time. Notice on the right side we have the partial derivative of the wave function with respect to time. On the left side we have the Laplacian, which means we can have a three-dimensional situation, a two-dimensional situation, or a one-dimensional situation. If we solve the Schrodinger equation, we end up with something that looks like this. We can see here we have p squared over 2m, p being the momentum, and multiplied times the wave function, plus v, which represents the potential energy or the potential, multiplied times the wave function, and e represents the total energy multiplied by the wave function. So essentially, we have the kinetic energy term, the potential energy term, and the total energy term. And that's then the solution format of the Schrodinger equation when we solve it, this being the symbol for the wave equation. And so these are the big five. We're going to take a look at those later on with much more detail. But first, we need to learn how to solve some non-standard partial differential equations of the first order and the second order before we start tackling these. And that's where we're going.